This is example <clears throat> um, of question three on page 35 of the course notes. And we're looking at here um, when we have a hollow rectangle section and how we would find the second moment of area about the X and about the Y axis of such a shape. Fortunately, this is something where we have a standard formula to use. So I'm going to just paste in this uh, formula here. You find this on page 28 of the course notes, and it tells us how we find uh, the, moment, the second moments of area for such a shape. So let's see what we need to do to find this out. Well, B, D, B and D are the quantities we're used to. This is B here, um, at the bottom, 200 millimetres, or of course at the top of the bread. In D, the height is 400. And we've got these internal um, dimensions of the hollow shape B1, which is here, and D1, which is here. And we get these by taking B and D and subtracting the width, um, the thickness, I should say, rather, of the actual rectangular part of the section. Now, we're told in the question it's eight millimetres all round. So what this means is, well, let's write down our values for B and D first. B is 200 millimetres and D is 400 millimetres. And so B1, that's, uh, I'll mark this in blue, so B1 is this distance here, is going to be equal to 200 minus two times eight. Two times eight because there's two sections of eight millimetres, um, one on either side, we have to remove and that gives us 184 millimetres for B1. And similarly for D1, I'm going to mark this um, vertically in blue here. This is going to be equal to 400. And again, minus two times eight for that, those top and bottom sections of the rectangle. So 400 minus two times eight gives us 384 millimetres. So we now have all pieces of information we need to find the second moments of area. We've got a formula here for the second moment of area about the x-axis. So we can put in our values. Let's write it out in full. And put in our numbers. So we have um, 200 times 400 cubed over 12 minus 184 times 384 cubed over 12. Now, if we put all of that into our calculator, which I shall do just now with mine, And 184384. I get an answer out that looks like this. Now write it out in full, or at least to one decimal place, and then I'll simplify it into scientific notation. And scientific notation is helpful in question this, it gives a way of comparing things quickly at a glance and also writing out our numbers more neatly. So this is the number I get in my calculator. Remember, our units are always important, millimetres to the power of four. And we can write that as 1.984 times 10 to the eight millimetres to the eight four. So that's how we've got the second moment of area about x. We uh, did something very similar to what we do for a rectangle. We just had to do a little bit more to, if you like, take away that hollow rectangle uh, in the centre. And for I, Y, Y, I'll write out the formula here that we get from page 28. This time, instead of BD cubed, it's DB cubed. And the same for D1, B1 cubed here. If we put in our numbers again, I want to change around our 400 or 200. So 200 cubed this time, divided by 12. Minus 384 times 184 cubed over here. And if we put these numbers in, I'll do that quickly. And 
And this is the answer that will come out in your calculator again, given to one decimal place. Six seven three two two three five eight point seven again millimeters at the power four. Now something we can do here, we could write this as six point seven um, times ten to the seven, but if we actually write it times ten to the eight, because this is what the answer on the course notes are trying to do, and the reason for it is this. You'll see in a second. Zero point seven zero point seven three times ten to the eight. We wouldn't normally do this in scientific notation. We'd always have our first meaningful number, the six, before the decimal point. But doing this allows us to compare these two. If we've written them both times 10 to the 8. We can see that um, we're comparing like for like, and that the second moment of area about the x-axis is about three times as big as that about the y-axis, which is what we would expect from the orientation that the um, vertical orientation as we're shown in the question, I was um, move across here. Um, we expect when the load is applied here, we're going to have a higher second moment of area, a greater resistance to change due to the shape um, of the section. And that's borne out by the answers here as well. You will notice one thing if you're looking at the course notes, which is the course notes has an incorrect answer here that's got a six instead of an eight but it should be as it is um, in my working it should be an eight that you get there so if you've done this in the course notes and you're wondering why you've not got the right answer i'm still taking error there so that completes the example